we, as humankind, have presumably encountered innumerable problems to this day. And although the type of problems and difficulties that we encounter change over the course of time, we've always had obstacles that we were to overcome in order to survive in this world. One of the greatest problems that we're currently facing in the 21st century is most definitely the climate crisis and the challenge of providing the growing societies with energy provided from environmentally sustainable resources. Hydropower, short for hydroelectric power, is classified as a renewable and environmentally sustainable resource as it relies on the kinetic energy of flowing water to generate electricity. With a staggering efficiency that can go up to 80% without any fossil fuels being burnt in the process, hydropower is often considered a very clean form of electricity generation. And due to this common but at the same time overly simplistic assumption, Large-scale electricity policies embracing hydropower, along with investments made in hydropower, have been increasing gradually since the second half of the 20th century. And up until now, the popularity of hydropower has increased so much that hydropower supplied more than 60% of all renewable electricity generated, accounting for around 16% of the world's total electricity generation in 2019 which makes hydropower the world's primary source of renewable energy. However, as sustainable energy is coming of age, we have slowly started to notice the effects that certain technologies can have on the environment. And as we acquire more knowledge on the consequences of damming natural waterways, whether hydropower really is a clean or a sustainable way of producing energy came into question. So, in order to find more accurate answers to these assertions, let's evaluate hydropower on its actual environmental impacts and realistic contributions to energy and development gains. First of all, is hydropower really a clean way of producing energy? In order to answer this, we first have to define what we mean by the word clean here. In this context, Clean stands for energy that comes from zero emission sources, which do not pollute the atmosphere when used. And many countries consider hydropower as a clean source of energy due to the fact that it doesn't involve burning fossil fuels. However, does this really mean that hydropower is clean? Well, after doing some reading on the topic, I found out that the world's hydropower plants are responsible for as much methane emissions as Canada, within the time span of a year. And that methane is known to be at least 34 times more of an effective greenhouse gas compared to carbon dioxide. I also found out that the total emissions from all hydropower plants are reported to account for an estimated 1.3% of all man-made greenhouse gas emissions. A study thus concluded that the carbon footprint of hydropower is far higher than previously assumed. And if you wonder how that's possible, let me tell you a bit about the working mechanism of hydropower plants. In order to produce electricity, hydropower plants constantly manipulate water levels. This process affects the amount of emissions that make their way into the atmosphere, as the hydrostatic pressure on submerged soils drops and allows gas bubbles to escape whenever water levels decrease. Sometimes, the methane contained in these waters is absorbed by the water and doesn't reach the surface. However, it also escapes into the air at times. Moreover, the construction process of hydropower plants causes a great amount of emissions as well. While the initial sources of impact are the construction of the main and accompanying parts of the plants, such as dams, reservoirs, transmission lines, and powerhouses, there are also indirect impacts associated with transportation, construction materials, and other energy requirements. Another very important question that I'd like to carry on with is whether hydropower is sustainable or not. And you know what, let's follow the same methodology that we've previously followed. In order to answer this, we first have to define the word sustainable. Um, the thing is, the term sustainable has many definitions and might refer to many different things in this context. However, I'd like to handle the definition 
which suggests that sustainable stands for energy that has no detrimental effect on the environment or on natural resources and thereby supports the long-term ecological balance. So, according to this very definition, can hydropower be considered a sustainable way of producing energy? Again, with respect to the reading that I've done, um, hydropower plants have a very high potential of causing serious changes in the dynamics of rivers. To be more specific, water becomes deprived of oxygen whenever it flows downstream from the dams of hydropower plants. And on top of that, the reservoirs that are placed above the dams are susceptible to harmful algal blooms and can leach toxic metals such as mercury from submerged soil. And all of these conditions could have substantial negative impacts on aquatic ecosystems. And considering that even the slightest change that takes place within a small habitat can lead to a chain reaction, plus major consequences in nature, the cumulative impacts of multiple plants could possibly have profound effects on the environment. I thereby believe that the so-called sustainability of hydropower is actually quite controvertible, just as its so-called cleanliness. As I mentioned earlier in my speech, we've started to question whether hydropower really is a clean or sustainable way of producing energy, as we slowly start to notice the effects that the natural waterways can have on the environment. And aimed at discussions regarding the sustainability of hydropower, a significant liking for small hydropower plants has emerged within society due to the widespread assumption that small plants have fewer socioeconomic and environmental impacts in comparison to larger plants. To illustrate, more than half of the U.S. states have renewable portfolio standards that disallow electricity from large hydropower plants, yet they embrace power generated by large hydro small hydropower plants um, due to, the, due to uh, the perception that smaller equates to lower impact. Furthermore, the inclination toward, towards small hydropower plants has increased so much throughout the years that the vast majority of the plants present in the world today fall under the category of small hydropower plants. To be exact, there are almost 11 small hydropower plants for every one large hydropower plant in the world today. But what does the word small really indicate here? Does it really correspond to fewer socioeconomic and environmental impacts? <coughs> Originally, the term small or small-scale hydropower plant here refers solely to facilities that produce less electricity and operate in smaller rivers compared to large or large-scale hydropower plants. So, although it is clear that the actual intention of this classification isn't to represent the impact of the plants, but is rather to represent their generation capacity, I thought there still might be a correlation between the amount of electricity produced and the impact. And when I studied further about this, I really did find out that there's a correlation between the two. However, probably not in the way that you think. In reality, it was concluded by a handful of studies that small hydropower projects have larger impacts per megawatt than do larger projects. In addition, in a study with 140 small projects compared to 17 large, small hydropower created more than seven times as many barriers that restricted flow and fish movement compared to large hydropower. Meanwhile, the energy generated by small hydropower was 15% more expensive and was less flexible in terms of meeting grid demands. With that, I'd like to mention a few last things. All of these common and widespread assumptions that I've discussed arise due to the aspects of hydropower that are presented to and that are perceived by society. These aspects, such as the fact that hydropower doesn't involve burning fossil fuels, are promoted so much that they become the most prominent and salient facts that society associates with hydropower. It is almost as if these aspects form a type of mask that restricts us from getting to know the real hydropower. And this could also be referred to as a persona. And like for any other persona, 
Unless one really tries to dig deeper into it, it becomes almost impossible to understand the true nature of the happening or the being. I hope my talk has helped you to enlighten yourself about the true nature of the